ghost ship. The very words are enough to send a chill down the spine of even the hardiest of mariners. We have all heard folksle tales of supernatural ships, such as the Flying Dutchman, glowing with a weird radiance as she sails the lonely oceans forever, bringing doom to all who gaze upon her. But can there be any truth to such ghastly legends? And how did these stories get their start? One possible explanation is the phenomena of derelicts, ships found floating on the sea with not a soul on board, or at least not a living soul. Any number of terrible fates can befall the crew of a ship at sea. Pirates may attack and put the ship's company to the sword. A mutiny may break out and pit crewmate against crewmate or disease can take the lives of so many sailors that the ship can no longer be operated. Sometimes a ship is given up for lost and abandoned in foul weather, only for her crew to meet their fate when their small lifeboats founder and sink, leaving their abandoned ship to sail on through the storm, deserted, but still afloat. In the year of 1777, Providence herself encountered just such a ghostly vessel. In the August of that year, Providence was cruising southeast, hunting for prizes in the Gulf Stream off New York. She had met with nothing thus far save disappointment and the guns of the Royal Navy. So when the lookout spied a sail far off on the distant horizon, Captain Rathbun gave orders to stand for her. It was the dead of night by the time Providence overhauled the other ship. But even in the dark, it was plain to see that she was behaving strangely. She carried a full press of canvas, but not a light could be seen aboard her, and not a sound answered Providence's hail. Determined to solve the mystery, Captain Rathbun ordered John Trevet, captain of Marines, to go aboard. Here is Trevet's own account of what happened next. Captain Rathbun ordered the boat out, armed her, and told me to take command of her, and said, for my consolation, if they killed me, he would not spare a one of them. I set out and ordered the coxswain to steer round her larboard quarter and go alongside. I set one man up with a lantern and followed him. I found no boats on deck, but saw on the quarter deck a deep sea lead and line. I went into the cabin and found all the beds and all the trunks full of rich clothing and chests with their keys in them. One of our men cried out, a man, a man. I asked where, and it proved to be only a small dog that opened all the eyes he had, but could not speak our Yankee tongue. I then went into the hold and found her in ballast, no cargo or provisions, save bread and 40 casks of nails and a few cases of French cordials. Naturally, Captain Rathbun wished to sail this mystery ship into the nearest friendly port, where she would fetch a pretty penny at auction. But alas, the ship's rudder was gone and no suitable replacement could be made. To prevent the ship from falling into British hands, Providence's crew burned her to the waterline, but not before taking off the dog and ferrying him safely across to their own ship. For the rest of the voyage, endless theories were bandied about as to the fate of the ghost ship's crew. When Providence herself finally returned home, her own crew scoured the papers for any mention of the ship, but not a word could they find of her origin or intended destination. And so, the ship remains a mystery to this day, one of the many derelicts sailing the seas, unguided by human hands. <laughs>